Hello again, everyone. Melth here, performed by Baldur's Gate 3 Challenge Run, where, among other challenges, I'll be avoiding long rests, not using healing potions in my party, and trying to tackle every encounter with combat in the hardest grouping possible. Watch out for spoilers throughout this series. So, here we are back in the Blighted Village. Let's take a look over here at this poster that talks about some missing children. Might be a little bit of lore we can glean from that, maybe. I don't remember that. Huh, why did she say that? Anyway. Children. Maggie Terrence, Marcus Terrence, Mathen Deach, Rochelle Kirk. So, a lot of children went missing. Now, we don't get much information about this, so it's hard to say what happened here exactly. My guess would be, because Sharon's try to, you know, sacrifice and murder saloon followers every ten days or so, maybe they decided to capture children because they're lazy and cowardly, and didn't feel like going for grown-ups. Just a guess. In any case, over there we've got ogres. Now, they're a fairly tough fight head-on. You can get them to, you know, join you, of course, if you want them to, which is quite powerful, but I'll try to avoid that and do things in the harder way instead. So, I think what I'll do here maybe is ungroup you. You can keep Basket with you, though. Then let's have, perhaps, Lazel throw out Enhanced Leap on you. Then we can have all these guys go up here to... Let me up to the roof. While Ballista goes in and gets ready to talk. I feel like this is kind of a good balance of roleplay and good tactics here, where basically he just tells his friends to get ready to cover him. While he goes in to talk to these people. Let's get going. So eating someone's arm there doesn't give him a good impression of them. Lump is one of my favorite characters. He's probably right about that. It probably does taste like pork. Whatever humanoid being they're eating. So, they're kind of hired henchmen of the goblins. Let's switch back to the others for a moment here. He's got six more turns of jump, so we want to keep that. Now, up here, we can maybe have someone do a mage hand. Let's perhaps have... Carlex like summon that. It could be useful. And walk away from the edge, you're not an obvious target. They'll have trouble targeting you if you are away from the edges, basically. I think down there will be fine. Am I not astonishing? A robust diet. He's telling a half truth here. He's figured out kind of how he got so smart. Interestingly, he used to have 19 intelligence, but the thing that gave him his intelligence only would bring it to 17. I think they corrected that in a recent patch. I do actually have the mark, but these people are just eating innocents here and working for the goblins, so let's attack. It's dinner time, boys. Reminds me of the orcs in Lord of the Rings. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Okay. Let's have you maybe drop a javelin for the hand to throw. And then, oh, where is it? There it is. Let maybe have the hand start the fight. Throw it at that guy. Path is interrupted, what? Okay, I guess one more thing we can do before combat begins. Where are those oils of accuracy? There they are. Eager for battle. And that uh, should be pretty good. Well, come on. There's definitely a way we can throw it at him. He's right there. There we go. Did the bonus damage too. I found that to be inconsistent, but it worked pretty well this time. Alright. 
The hand might die because no one could throw a rock at it. It can't move, so you know, we'll see how that goes. Still breathing, despite everything. Well, let's get the others in on this too. So I think we probably want to focus fire lump as the most dangerous target. In my best interest. Okay, so she missed, but she still did the bonus damage there, so that's nice. Sometimes being up high gives you enough height advantage to make up for other disadvantages, like you know, short range, but sometimes it doesn't. Here I guess it doesn't. Alright, if we could kill Lump this turn, we could get an extra action with a star, but that's unlikely to work. So let's focus on what probably will work. Let's put the additional throw damage on him. Now, oh, keep missing him. That is highly improbable. He's not that good at dodging things. I could have one of the ravens get in there in that fight. Oh yeah, this one's still not in, is it? Even though, I guess it's in stealth mode, that's why. I didn't mean to put it there. If we have it fly over here, and maybe exit stealth mode, it might help bait it over in that direction. So, exit stealth mode. Did that? Not get it. Come on. We could fly one down and peck at them. I want to save that for later. Thanks so they don't get killed now. With well, there's too many ogres to control properly. Okay. So I might do more damage if I threw, but probably not, given that I've got such good numbers here. Let's fire away first with this one while we've got a max of accuracy on this first shot. Pretty good. All right. Behold the dance of death. That line does sound a bit cooler from this particular voice for some reason than some of the other ones. Do I want to push that guy back? I'm not sure. Shouldn't have made me we'll try it like that. Okay. So Astarian should have a good chance now to take that guy out with one more shot. This one, in fact, is guaranteed if it hits. Nice. So he's invisible now. That gives him advantage of his next attack, so he can almost certainly hit that guy. So let's put the hurt on him, too. Hmm, critical. That barely matters because most of his damage doesn't come from his dice, which is all that gets multiplied in the critical. Like, the 16 said the same, so we just rolled like one of the d6 and then forgot 18 total. Criticals matter only for some characters in D&D 5e. Oh, miss. Oh, well. Right, let's fly over here, so again, when an ogre comes over here, which it probably will, trying to get away from us, we can then... Well, secure advantage so against it. Alright, I could probably jump over to here to save some movement that way. I'll keep Basket hidden. Kind of an ace in the hole. Oh, jeez, it's lacking again. I thought it wouldn't do that once I got to positions where I wasn't up high, but no such luck. Alright, he doesn't see a target, so he's dashing. That's good for me. Which means the Mage Hand can get away too. It can't throw anywhere, it already used his action, so I don't need to drop anything for it yet. I'll just run it like that or so. And as for the Raven, how much movement would it need to get down here? About half. That's okay if I can blind it, which has a it won't tell me how much chance it's working. If I failed that, that ogre could throw at me. I've got a melee attack roll. Let's see, I'm going to have probably a plus four to hit against AC of eight, so it should be a pretty good chance, really. Because if I can blind him, I can then get around the corner, basically he can't hit me anymore. The other one's the threat. 65% is pretty good. There we go. Okay. Or I can get back up onto the roof, and that works even better. Up we go. So now we have advantage on the attacks we make against that guy. Is he also going to dash, or does he see a target? Okay, good, he's dashing too. He dashed over there, that's unusual. They'll try to get behind cover. They're decently smart about that for a bunch of ogres, really. So, do the others have any way they can throw at this guy? That's the first question. We want to focus fire him, if at all possible. Path is interrupted. Even to that point, 
if you aim at the right pixel, sometimes you can get away with it. What if I was to hop down hereabouts? Yeah, it was just a guess and it was a wrong guess. Okay, I will run over there, which does expose me to possible danger if I don't move carefully after that. No time to waste. Okay, I got the extra damage there, and but it threw him out of the way. That's actually bad for me, I think. This is your end. Nah, he made a saving throw against that. Not too surprising. Nothing important is ever easy. So the trouble is he got behind cover because he got knocked there. I really don't like that very much. What is your chance to scare one of these guys? It's probably pretty low. Like, if anyone's going to get scared, it is one of these guys. But I think it's not really worth the risk. Nothing will stand in my way. Do I have any means to take that guy out? Or should I just focus my attention on that one instead? I can certainly throw with that guy. Yep. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll just do that. I can't get Lei Boing's out to safety in that case, but it'll probably be okay. I really cannot understand why sometimes you get the uh, extra damage and sometimes you don't from height. It's just it's not at all consistent. Can't even catch my breath. He's still blind. I think we should just get this guy to safety. Is there any way that we can pull her to a better position? I don't think so. With haste. Maybe hide over there, so he's not a target. He's a little easier to hit. She has temporary hit points, among other advantages, so it's not as bad if she gets hit. Alright, will this be enough high ground? Okay, that time, so you can see, it's just, it's not consistent. Sometimes you get the extra damage, sometimes you don't, even from like the same or similar positions. Okay, that one will allow me to target, apparently. An incredible trick shot through that little hole in the roof. Let's drop a javelin for the mage hand, or a hand actually will work fine. Let's drop a hand actually for the mage hand to use. Alright, can that guy find a t way to target Le Boing Zell? Probably. No! Okay, I got her behind cover better than I thought. Good. Hmm. Didn't know they could actually climb that. Interesting. I've never had them be able to get that far. Well, we'll take him out before he causes too much trouble, I think. Or not. 65%. I could bet this Raven's life on that. Or I could bet that I'll just take him out. I think I can t just take him out. Especially if I can just shove him off a thing to his death with a repelling blast. Alright, do you have a path to lay boiling cell, or are you also blocked? Okay, you are also blocked. So I did a good job of getting behind the roof. It's hard to tell when the AI can and can't find a fire solution because they can do things that are not really available to a, a human. Well, I think the smart thing to do would be knock that guy off and see how much fall damage he takes. It should be pretty big because big guys take more. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. That was a completely illogical direction for you to bounce, sir. Okay. Not loving that. Time to kill. So I need to take this guy down. I guess I should have the Raven work on that. And it still has plenty of movement so I can fly over to where hopefully it can't be targeted. So now it gave me advantage basically for free. Ran a little bit risk, but not a big one there. Even if it had failed to get that, I could probably have still have killed the guy, but it's just now even more likely to work. Do I have a way to slow that guy down so we can't get up here and cause any trouble? I think I could entangle him or things like that, or just throw grease in the area. Let's see what I need after maybe uh, a star in perhaps gets the kill. Let's go. With Karlak, you know, get up here, throw a hand axe, why don't you? Oh, got extra damage there, that's nice. I 
and let's see what you can drop for the mage hand to use. Eh, take one of those, drop it. If you get over there, you might be harder to hit, or you might not. It's hard to predict. We'll try it. If a Starian gets the kill, a Starian can then get another action, therefore another attack, due to him having the Bloodless Elixir, so let's go for that. I like that. That's a normal range, but this is still going to be pretty darn good. 20 damage. If I can put another 20 on him, I might be able to just finish him off with the Mage Hand. Okay, so no need to worry further in that case if that hits. These high views are really killing me, apparently. I've really turned my graphics down a lot, but since patch 5, the game has gotten a lot more stuttery. There we go. Pretty good use of Mage Hand, I'd say. Pretty good tactics all in all. Let's move. And I guess Lei Boing Zell agrees with that, and now is head over heels in lust with Ballista. I have a confession. I was too hasty to judge you. I thought you witless, gutless, unimpressively bland. Yes. And she is, is proud of all that stuff. We've had, like, no positive interactions so far. She's just been a monster the whole way through. Constantly talking about how she loves murder, how she wishes you could just murder helpless refugees, how murder is a good thing, how I should definitely give into the Dark Rage and just murder people for fun. But she approves of me killing some ogres, so now she wants to have sex. I mean, so besides her having just a horrifying personality, this is some hag-tier flirting. First of all, we're elves. We would call it a fragrance, not an odor, just for starters there. But the rest of this is all pretty unappealing, too. But he wouldn't say that out loud. He is, after all, the one of the group who has good persuasion skills and is a bit more intelligent than she is. Again, just, this is the kind of thing a hag would say if she was flirting with you. It's really not appealing. Do you? I think, in fact, he's the opposite of flattered. Like, one day, he finds out a goblin is his butler. The next day, this horrifying, githyanki, chaotic, evil monstrosity is hitting on him. He must just be so awful if someone like her is into him. That's how he's feeling right now. These guys are just not good for his self-image. Alright, let's get down there and loot some important items. Please don't hurt yourselves on the way down. Occasionally a party members would be like, hmm, yeah, there is a safe way down, or I could jump off this cliff here and take damage. That sounds more fun. Alright. So, I just need to find the body of Lump, the only one who has any good treasure. And I also need to find all the stuff that we pitched at all of them. Ah, uh, yeah, this thing, I don't know what you're supposed to do with it, because if you destroy it, it does not knock that roof down, it's pretty useless, so I'm not sure what the point of it is. Alright, recover our throwing weapons. We got some good use out of those this time. This will probably be one of the last fights where we get good use out of that, because pretty soon we'll have cantrips that do more damage and are more dependable. So, here's where we find out about how he got his good intelligence. I guess we'll take that. And this is a great item here. In 5e, unlike in some, but not all, previous D&D editions, the stat boosting items basically replace your stats rather than adding a plus onto them. So, no matter how bad your intelligence is, it's set to exactly 17, which is a plus 3 modifier. So that will be perfect for Karlak, who just reached the multi to Wizard. Now, a Lump's Warhorn here, again, I said you can befriend them and get them to some, you know, be summonables who then help you in fights, and they're really powerful for that job, but that would make things too easy, so... That's why I'm not doing that. So let us give this special new hat to Karlak. Inventory is what I wanted. I should probably have sorted this beforehand. There we go. So her int just went from 8 to 17. That's a nice improvement. She now has enough intelligence to equip a decent number of spell slots as a wizard. 
We don't need that anymore. Once it's been summoned, it stays out. She doesn't really have many good spells yet. We'll just take those for the time being. We'll get her better spells later on. We're just going to learn any spell they want from scrolls. Which does remind me, I think we had some scrolls of Firebolt and things like that that she could learn. So let's work on that. And you know, Darkness is good too. So let's learn Firebolt. And the rest of these, I think, are not so good that we really want to learn them necessarily. Web was really nerfed into the ground in this game, and also Druids can cast it basically at will by turning into a spider. Which is pretty darn good. Might as well learn that too. Situational, but sometimes you want necrotic damage and to deny healing or things like that. And darkness is quite good. I do have Arrows of Darkness for it. I might not want to spend a level 2 spell slot on it, but I also might want to have the option. So I think I will splurge and learn it. And I'll find more Scrolls of Darkness later on. I might, in that case, you get you know, more area and a bit more uh, dur you know, lasting of your darkness, so I'll probably equip it for that reason. If I do an Arrow of Darkness, that is. Alright, we can interview one of the victims of the Ogre here. Tiefling's corpse stirs with the spell. You realize the Tiefling's body has been torn open by huge I guess they hands. censored out that horrifying violence there. Since she looks totally fine, other than a bit of blood spatter. Strange warriors. So, get the Anki again, have just been massacring people. Hunters. You guys have average speed. Don't pretend that you're any faster than you are. Okay, so once again, another clue pointing to the exact same location. Friend of Zoru, who was the other one who survived the Githyanki attack. I'm suddenly unsure what she means by true sight, no coin. A coin that, or anything that gave true sight would be really good, but I don't think she has anything. Ogres, hungry, bloodied, screams. I think once we picked up the rest of our ammunition, we've done about all there is to do here. Once again, pretty much every book we find relates to things that will happen in this plot. Man, it is lagging again. I am going to, I think, pause it here and see if I can figure out what in the world is making that happen worse than usual here. Someone's dying. Might explain what happened here. Yeah, okay, fine. We'll read that first. There we go. I, my best guess is that the Sharans are just abducting and murdering people, because they do that to Salunite worshippers as a religious sacrament every, like, ten days. I'm not sure. I don't think it was the Red Wizard, because he was only taking people basically out of, uh, digging them up out of the graveyard is the main thing we figured out. I mean, maybe disappeared a few people, but not that many, I would think. Alright, so I will save it here and try to make it less lackey somehow or other. Alright, I'm back. I've turned down some settings again. I never had to do this until Patch 5 came out. I'd recorded like 17 videos in my previous series, no problems. So, it's unfortunate. I haven't found a solution that works consistently yet. Bola's Guide is full of lies, as usual. Backward doesn't have that much in it. Just put that in our wares, I guess. So, we were off to go try to prove that Kaga is a Shadow Druid. So, I mean, out of character, the reason to do that, I guess, is just that it's a quest we're already on, but get a decent reward for it. We have to do it before clearing out the goblins, so it makes some sense to do it now, and it's not the toughest battle. It makes sense to save a lot of the toughest fights when you're level 5. That's kind of the next big power-up, in fact, the last really big power-up in Act 1, usually. 
So, I want to save the hardest fights for that point. Do some fights, and maybe some boss fights here at level 4, but save the really, really rough ones for level 5. In character, we want to try to clear a good name with the druids, basically. So we save one druid's life, Findal, down in the tunnel. And if we can prove their leader was a traitor and so forth, maybe that'll help us get back to their good graces. As I said before, there are no out-of-character consequences for killing Nettie. No one cares, but I'm trying to pretend that this game makes sense in that way. Pig. Speaking of pigs, there's a pig head over there. You know, if it did turn into mind flares, we wouldn't care about all this muck. Instead of floating over it, we would probably just be glad that it's there, because mind flares just love to be mucusy and moist all the time. They hate drying out. They hate sunlight, because it could dry them out. It doesn't hurt them, they just don't like it. Mind flares plot to put up the sun just because it's an inconvenience for them, which I think is really short-sighted for people who have superhuman intelligence, because where would all their, like, cattle races live if it wasn't for the sun? Oh, there's a treasure you can dig up somewhere around here, but I guess I've failed to spot it. Let me work on it anyway. Somewhere around here? There we go. This one's unusual. Most treasures you spot with survival, this one you spot with perception, and it has a much better treasure than average. My guess is that it was one of their first treasure ideas in the game or something like that before they standardized the system, but I really don't know. It always has these fleet fingers in it and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, fleet fingers are pretty bad, I would say. For one thing, I've heard from a commenter on a previous video that they are bugged, but even if it weren't for that, I'd say they're still pretty bad because you do not want to waste your actions on dashing. Not in that kind of challenge run where every single action is important. So the cases where you want to use it are very rare, basically. Anyway, there's one more treasure to spot over here. Hidden in this tree. Arrow of Darkness, pretty good as I mentioned before. Haven't used them yet, but I will. An Arrow of Salving, I never really get much use out of those because Poison, Paralysis, and Blindness are all pretty rare, and I don't usually want to spend an action fixing them when they do come up. Or an attack, rather than an entire action if you have extra attack, but I only have one go with extra attack, so you know what I mean. Alright, so here is what is clearly a hag talking to people she's clearly lying to. But if we want to save their lives, we have to play along and pretend to side with her. If you side with them against her, she'll just murder them in one blow here and you can't stop her. If you let her flee, basically, and then talk to her and try to talk to them and try to help them, they will run off in the swamp and appreciate listening no matter what you do and get killed immediately. Even if they kill every danger in the swamp, they'll still get killed and just like be found as corpses even if there were no dangers left. The old woman's face. They basically script the die unless you knock them out, and then you can tell Marina that you've just knocked them out rather than killed them. So still wail that they've died, but like you can go back and see if they are indeed still alive. So that's all you can do to save them. I once saw a guide saying you can save them by doing a whole complicated rigmarole here, basically, but uh, you can't. What you can get is a, a case where the hag will lie to you and tell you that they're still alive, but you can find their bodies and like she's a hag, she's lying. He's with the hag. So. It became necessary to destroy Marina's brothers in order to save them. Alright. We've got to do non-lethal, which only our main characters can do. So the ravens can help in knocking them out, but only the main uh, four guys can actually... I mean, the ravens can help in blinding them, only the main four can actually knock them out. Thought I clicked there. Okay. Let's try that again. Alright, they're both blinded, so it'll be easy to hit them. Now, my arrows, I don't think, can kill them. Support and 9 damage, 10 HP. Wait a second. Whoa, okay. Stupid mode turned itself on. I absolutely hate that feature. It is one of the worst things in the game. I don't know why it exists. I don't know why it turns itself on automatically so many times. It's just awful. And it can completely ruin your run. Okay. Let's try that again. There we go. I can also shoot... This one. Okay, they both softened up. Now, I can't actually have Lady Voing Zell do it, I don't think, because she has the staff which could inflict Ensnare, which is a chance, I think, to cause damage that is lethal damage. So, I can't use that. I've got to have probably Astarian and Karlak do the knocking out. That's okay, they've got three attacks between them. They have pretty good chances here. Hmm.
There we go. Oh my stars! I One XP each. We're just game. rolling an XP now. We hit level five in no time. So it's clear she does know me, Rena, but sister, maybe we'll find information here. With me. This is all my fault, but I made a promise. May Rena begged me this is all lies. She's just, you know, playing for. through this whole my elaborate ruse. Hags never oh, keep their word. They're not like devils. They make deals, but they do not How keep their deals. There are no circumstances where a deal with a hag is ever a good idea. They will never even follow the letter of what they promised. There's this notion there's a hag code of ethics, but that's just hag propaganda that they spread on purpose. They only follow that with each other. So only a profoundly stupid character would make a deal with a hag, because they're just consistent about never, ever making good deals with people. Silly Dark Urge line there. The Dark Urge is constant goofy lines really do bug me a bit. I didn't sign up for cartoonish villainy when I played Dark Urge here, you know? A chill runs up your spine. You feel like you're being watched. So hags always run this list with enchantments and delusions. So this is not really surprising. The question is just can we pass it? The answer is probably not unless we get lucky. Huh. Okay. Doesn't really matter. There are other ways to reveal the swamp for what it is. Hags also just by their presence make swamps become these forbidding and terrible places. I think it's still a pretty cool moment though. Even the name on the map from Sunlit Wetlands to Putrid Bog changes. I think that's a good touch. It's a well done part of the game. However, this upcoming section is a frustrating bit of the game. I mean, look at this basket. So, poisoned apples, they'd be called juicy apples otherwise, but, like, you have to be, I think, fairly off guard Swift to fall for that. My feet can carry me. What I hate is this section here. There are little traps in the water that do AoE bleed damage, and your partner muscles just blunder into them. You can't just have the AI just follow you in a straight line the way you'd like to. So, you have to manually ever order everyone to walk every single inch or try to detect the traps that are really hard to spot. I don't love that. So. Let's manually... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ungroup, ungroup. Manually order you to walk like that. Even the ravens can get blown up by them, and they'll die in one shot. I'd love to, thanks. There we go. Like it's well be done. Stick in the walkways and you'll be okay. A decent perception of this party was still barely past like one time. Anyway, talk to the red cap, which thinks it still disguises a sheep. Red caps can come from British Isles folklore. There's one story, I think, near the Scottish border of this goblin y type creature that wore a red hat, stained with the blood of its victims, and had iron claws and iron boots. Iron boots don't sound good for running people down with, but, you know, whatever. Let us attack it. Well, well, well. All is ash and meat. There's that silly line again. All is ash and meat. Let's get this over with. Let's get this over with, indeed. I'm not in stealth, so I mean, no wonder stealth failed. The blood stages have range attacks. The other ones are, I think, melee only. Do I have a way to attack them at range from here? Only if I was to approach a lot more than I really want to. I could jump. I don't think there's actually a double movement cost because I will be jumping. Taking position. Ah. Not worth it. I want to try to take out the blood sages, only they have range attacks, basically. Going through the water is hazardous. Maybe I'll jump it. If I can just slow him down so he can't get to me, that's also, like, pretty good. Another. Not great, but pretty good. Ray of Frost is a very nice counter in that it does decent damage, and then it also slows the target down, which means that it's kind of a good control and mild damage effect in one. Hard to get better than that for a cantrip, I would say. 
kind of like Eldritch Blast and that it pushes enemies back, Ray Frost lets them down. They combo well together, just keep enemies off you, basically. Survival is all that matters. You can probably kill that guy and then turn invisible. It's a good chance that it works. A better position. We'll try that. Okay, now it's important to remember you can turn this move off when you want to. I think in this case, I do want to. I'll probably switch to my Dread Ambusher range, which is now guaranteed to kill. 90% chance to kill, that is. So I could attack that red cap from invisibility. Pretty good damage. I think I might pass on that, though. I'll let them come closer, and I'll just take this opportunity to hide, I think, while I'm invisible. They might have to waste time and actions dealing with that. And again, only the Blood Sages have range attacks, so the rest are not a major threat. So I'll let them come to me, then I'll deal with them. I often will pull back a bit further and go to this high ground area and launch things at them from here, but the way I'm positioned right now, I think will probably work out okay. All right, he casts a buff on them. That shouldn't really matter as long as I handle this decently. Uh, the Swamp does slow them down too, so that also controls them, makes them be not that big a threat. That guy will come out alone, I think. I can deal with him alone. Couldn't even close to melee. Yeah. Not a big deal. I won't give in. They do have pretty good hit points, so... You know, maybe... Let's see. You're not hidden anymore, are you? Yeah, that's fine. Let's just go for getting free advantage on this guy. Oop. Camera almost caused a problem there. Nice. Free advantage is good. Let me, while I'm thinking of it, turn off, follow the leader so they don't go over any booby traps themselves. I don't think they set them off, but they can get killed by them. Victory awaits. Still on my feet. I'm heating up. If I could freeze that guy, he would not be budging. I don't know that I can efficiently, though. Also, when they're wet, they take double damage. I don't think he's currently wet, though. I could shove him into probably the brine, but the lock that is. No, okay. You're still a pretty good melee attacker, so we'll just go like that. I think it was still worth it. Like, the damage of a hand crossbow shot would be offset by double damage on the Ray of Frost. I am fury. I am death. Pretty good damage to that necrotic from having that symbiotic entity. You just get a lot of good damage from being a spore druid in the early game. The plus d6 in every attack matters a lot at this stage. The chance to do another 2d4 matters a lot too. They get a saving throw to resist it, which they have a decent chance to resist because constitution saving throws are usually pretty good for monsters, but still, it's good. Not great maybe, but good. All right, let's go into sharpshooter mode again. And you know, if I use a bonus action for this, that'll leave me with an action or two with which I can dash if I want to. Let's move. So maybe I will do that. Oh, I lost condition invisible. That changes things actually, doesn't it? Not enough resources. I have another action left. Why can't I hide with that? There we go. Blood Sage will hopefully just kind of run over and not build an actual attack, and then I bet a starting to finish him. And that guy's still going to be stuck in the filthy water, so that's good for me. Is he wet? No, man, they keep going through the water without getting wet somehow. Nothing important is ever easy. I can probably just kill him if I... No, no, not anymore. Okay. Let's get some javelins onto you. Or a spear. Spears are good. Throw it. Taking position. Maintain concentration, but that's not actually important. No choice but to keep going. 
Can I push that guy into the swamp? Okay, now he's wet. I can run over here and... Oh, don't need to go to the wicker basket and just poke you for some damage. Oh, critical. Doesn't make a big difference, but every little bit counts. Does that put him in a range where starting would kill him in one shot? Yes, if he hits. There we go. Invisible and another action. I don't think I can kill this turn, so it's probably better to just wait. But I can frost this guy for double damage right now. And... Oh, he's not wet. I keep thinking that they're wet when they're somehow not. But in any case, with his speed slowed, he will not be reaching us anytime soon. Maybe I should attack those barbed before they go off on me. Oh, that was a, a lousy roll. Uh, maybe you attack those barbed It's Break invisibility. It's, it's fine. That little blue number there was some lightning charge damage, I believe, from how he dashed before. He has the shoes that give you lightning charges upon dash. Which I don't want to use often, but hey, when I have to dash anyway, I guess that's okay. I just, I see that as usually a less than ideal sign in a fight if I had to dash. I would rather enemies of the dash to get to me and waste their turns. Let's spill some blood. Okay. Still on my feet. You've made a grave mistake. Hand Cross still does more damage than a Ray of Frost at this point, because Ray of Frost does not add your intelligence to the damage. Victory awaits. I should have actually thrown something. I just got a little bit lazy about that and used the Hand Crossbow instead. In my best interest. Okay, I think we're at the point where Star can finish it. Pretty much guaranteed if it takes off Sharpshooter, so let's go for it. Okay, get a little closer. Huh. Min damage there, I think. There we go. Alright, I think I better save it there for now. Pick up next time, getting to the waypoint, taking out a few more fights in the swamp, and then dealing with Kaga. Thank you for watching, everyone. And a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Master Knight DH, Jackie, and Lino, George Grin, Travis, Carlo Andrea 97, Gregory, Danny Hall, William Wakefield, Jeffrey Morse, Dylan Wagner, Just Becca, Jack, Austin Livingston, Mashas01, CL, Jacob Marshall, Nubiana, and Till Fisher. Have a great day, everyone.